How does a relatively slim laptop like this provide hours and hours of battery? There is just one answer, ARM. The architecture that is responsible for all-day battery life on mobile phones, laptops, tablets and embedded systems traditionally known for lower cost, lower power and minimal heat generation. The misconception remains that this particular processor architecture is meant for lower power devices. Now cut to 2023, things have changed. And how? Attempting to explain this without getting technical is going to be tough. To contextualize this, there are two main architectures with respect to mainstream computer processing, laptops and desktops, namely x86 and ARM. x86 processors are the most common and prevalent ones available in the market. To put it simply, hardware components within the x86 framework function independently. The GPU, memory, storage and the CPU itself. Most components will have separate controllers. These can be changed or upgraded without affecting overall functionality. When it comes to the ARM architecture, it doesn't need to have a separate CPU. The processing unit and all other controllers are on the same physical level. That is kind of like an integrated circuit. Unlike x86, these ARM based chips aren't interchangeable and are designed for a very specific application. What you would call a system on a chip, an SOC. X86 is more versatile, modular and vastly superior in terms of upgradability whereas ARM kind of limits your options. So the natural conclusion that you would pop in your head, X86 is amazing and ARM is not quite amazing. Now that's not true. Think of it this way, would it make more sense for a single person to travel a 2 km distance in a petrol guzzling 4x4 or just take your motorbike? Your answer to that question is what raised the need for reduced instruction set computing. You don't need a shotgun to kill a fly. So the x86 processors come with more transistors, are larger, run hotter and are typically sensible in settings where you absolutely do not care about the power being spent. ARM processor on the other hand makes sense when you're constantly looking over your shoulder to see the power draw and figure out the most sensible instruction you can give to your processor to accomplish its task efficiently rather as efficiently as possible. That's not to say ARM processors can't do high performance compute. They just need to be repurposed to do the task which needs high performance compute. Now case in point is that each ARM design is unique unlike x86. Now ARM doesn't even sell processors. They just license you a chip design allowing you to manufacture it yourself. So coming back to our premise. Now, why did Apple ditch Intel for their own ARM-based Apple Silicon? Now, way back in 1990, Apple was one of the founding partners for ARM. They even tried using it in one of the products called Newton in 1993. Apple struck gold when they started shipping the iPods in 2001 based on guess what? An ARM-based processor. A music player doesn't need a super powerful processor. It needs a processor that just sips power and does predefined tasks. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Until next time, cheers.